This is episode 132 of Zen and the Art of Real Estate Investing with my guest, Clint Harris. Clint has a long history in real estate, but he transitioned that into revitalizing commercial buildings into self-storage and his role in investor relations at Nomad Capital. We're going to talk about the things that he did wrong and the things that he did right. Clint, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. If we're going to talk about the things I did wrong, this might have to be a three-part episode. So <laughs> yeah. see. Well, I think, I mean, I think it's always helpful to, for people to be vulnerable about the mistakes they made, because that's what can save listeners from making the same mistakes that we've made. And let's start there. If you could just pick out one, what was the one biggest mistake that you made just an overall real estate investing? I think the biggest mistake I probably made, and, and I think I probably made it twice uh, throughout my investing career was focusing so much on the, the investment strategy that I chose and the next project that I didn't focus on my ability to scale or specifically focus on the project after that. Mm. I spent so much, and you can run into obstacles in terms of the leverage you create for yourself through debt to income ratio or, or whatever it may be in terms of for the cash on cash return or whatever it may take. You, you spend so much time focused on the next project because you're so excited about it yeah. that you don't really think to think about a clear vision of what your long-term goal is and walk backwards from there to understand what the scalability of your current strategy is. And if the next project that you're so excited about is going to help you or it's going to hurt you. For me, the vision went to small multifamily and then it went to multifamily. When I moved to Wilmington in 2017, I took a promotion selling pacemakers and defibrillators. I moved to the coast to take over territory. Uh, that opened up an area that had tourism, right? So I could buy small multifamily. When I converted those to Airbnb properties, it would three to four X the yeah. gross rental potential. So it was a huge jump forward. And to me, I thought that was, again, what I originally thought, I thought that was a destination for my investing career. Yeah. Because I, I was able to replace my income as a fairly high earning medical sales rep that way. But again, I was chasing financial independence. And when I hit it, it came at the cost of time and location independence, right. right? And that, that's what we're, everybody's chasing, especially as you start out, you're looking for cash flow, right? Well, I think what most people learn, especially with the ups and downs of the market that we've recently has, is that in the history of the world, appreciation has made more millionaires and billionaires than cash flow ever has or ever will, right? Yeah. So you, you need the cash flow, but ultimately when that property really appreciates, and you're still making the same amount of cash flow, you have to start thinking about your return on equity and how you can leverage that property and move on to the next thing. So I made the same mistake there. Like in terms of the scale and what I wanted for my life with single families, it wasn't going to get there. It got there in terms of finances with the multifamily properties and those 14 Airbnb listings that we still own turned into partnering on a property management company that manages another 85. We built that company out just so I could try to hire myself out of having to manage my property. Yeah. So it looks, it looks passive, but it's really just residual because we front loaded two years of work to right. get that to where it is. I started really digging in on self-storage and understanding that you're really just renting someone a box of air um, and they're paying you to put their stuff in there. And it's, it's very like, it's got the value of multifamily in terms of one person. You know, when I had single family homes, one person can move out and really screws you for a couple months until you get the next person in there. So there's value with multifamily, but remember the lesson that I learned with my quadplexes and duplex, buying small multifamily properties that had bad long-term tenants in place. I was moving out month to month tenants that were chain smoking in the property. When I come in and I do a renovation and I convert it to a different asset class from bad long-term to a top performing Airbnb property. It's three to four X is the gross rental potential. And so when I ran into my partners, actually at a local real estate meetup here in Wilmington, what they were working on in the project they had done in the past really jumped out at me because they were buying nasty old warehouses and big box retail buildings and converting it to storage. And anytime you say asset class conversion to anyone who's done it before, even on a tiny scale like I had, yeah, it jumps out at me and also the ability to Fast forward through a lot of the mistakes that I had made every time I had, had taken on a new strategy in the past, they had already done this and it put me in a position where I could partner th with them with capital. And we began the, the aggressive pursuit of 
passive strategies that have a conversion in place. And I went all in on self-storage in 2022. Yeah. Just to hop back on a couple of things, I think it's interesting that the, your scale and single family and your scale for the, when you turn to Airbnbs were ended up with the same function, like you said. I think everybody who's really chasing financial independence is definitely chasing time independence. They just don't know it because what do you want the money for if you can't get the freedom? And that's the thing where you, when you get multiple, just like we said, sure, you can have a hundred units. I don't know why so many people are obsessed with doors because the more doors you have, the more problems you have. Just like you said, you could have eight units if they're cash flowing a hundred bucks each, and then you have to fix one furnace. You're done for like three years for all property. <laughs> You know, just because of one property or they're like, well, I love four families, but you have four furnaces. <laughs> like, I just think right. of furnaces because they cost a lot. And this is the thing that changes. And the one thing about self-storage that I think is really interesting is because yeah. we call them tenants in self-storage, but they're not. I always like to think of it as I'm just renting space to the stuff. They don't talk back. <laughs> you know, stuff, <laughs> the stuff doesn't have a problem. Like if it's like a couple of degrees too hot, they really don't care. They're just papers and motorcycles and whatever people want. What I see is that there's this linear progression that typically happens among investors. And it's the young people. A lot of times we live in an area where close by there's some military towns and we get a lot of young military guys that come out and they have great character, great drive and great hustle and a little bit of money, but not enough to get started in a meaningful way. Yeah. So what you see is a lot of people start out in their investing career as wholesalers. So they're wholesaling property because they're trading hustle for money. Right. And they start the ones that are good at it, start having a little bit of success. And then some of times they realize they're selling properties to people that are flipping it and they start flipping a few properties and they get a few wrong, but then they get a few right and they start hitting some good ones. And ultimately they realize, and sometimes that person becomes a realtor, then they can sell their own flips and take the commission on it. Ultimately the wholesaler, the flipper and the real estate agent realize something. They're still trading time for money. And the day they stop working is the day they stop getting paid. Yeah. So that person then moves on to start keeping some properties as single family rentals, right? So they build up a small portfolio of single family rentals. Then they learn the same thing that I did. It's really slow. It's really slow to scale and it's not going to get you where you want to be. So then they get into small multifamily, very much like I did, or they get into Airbnb because it juices the rents. Ultimately, they get to the point where, you know, a bunch of small multifamily is more of a headache than one 40 unit building. But then a couple of years after that, they realize if you go to 60 to 80 units, it's big enough that you can have an on-site manager and your life gets easier. And it's still just one roof. And at some point in there, this is like 20 years we're talking about yeah. right now. And at some point, that person originally was looking at their return on investment and their cash on cash return because that dictated how fast they could move on to the next property. But then as the properties start going up in value, they start looking at their return on equity. You're making 50 grand a year off a property and you bought it for 500, but now it's worth a million. So your return on equity just went down because the equity went up so high. So then they start liquidating and doing 1031 exchanges and okay. moving that equity in eventually. Eventually, if you do it long enough, just about without exception, I see people get to the point where they don't value on return on investment or return on or cash on cash return or return on equity. They get to a point where they start valuing based upon return of time. And that's when a lot of times people start moving towards syndication offerings because with a syndication, you have to have those three things to have success in any kind of real estate investing. It's time, experience, and money. But for people where your time becomes worth more than anything else, and without time, you can't get experience if you don't already have it. People can take their capital and the money that they have and put it to work with someone else that's using their time and experience. And I'm willing to accept a little bit less of a return than if I was actively working and flipping houses. But if I spend one to two hours every quarter when my quarterly distribution check and the, the report comes in, that's a really good return on time. And for all of us, I think as we get farther in our life and we have less of it, our time becomes worth more than anything else. And your return ultimately becomes based upon the amount of time that you have to spend to get.